Seriously. You're gonna be lonely as hell. Join a club. It YouTube, it's me, it's Erin, and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I wanted to do a kind of watch this video before you choose which college you're gonna go to video because if you guys don't know, college decision decision. <laughs> if you guys don't know, college decision day is coming up May 1st, and that's in like two weeks. So that's so soon. And if you guys also didn't know, me just like throwing information at you, my sister is a senior, and so she's gonna be choosing her college in the next few weeks. And so I want to make this video kind of like for her, but also like for anybody else watching if they're trying to decide what college they want to go to because when I chose my college, if you didn't know, I ended up transferring so I clearly did not follow any of these. I think I kind of chose it for the wrong reason. This. I definitely could have used this video on this list. So I thought it would be really cool to have kind of a perspective from somebody going through the process right now and through myself who I'm going to be a senior in college this upcoming year. So if you're here, definitely give this video a like. And comment down below any tips that you have and subscribe down below. And without further ado, we're just going to get started. So Jamie's going to start off first with her oh, number one. The first tip I have is to know the kind of era you want. When I was looking into schools, I knew I wanted something outside of city or something in a city. Do you want to tell them what schools you're deciding between right now? I'm deciding between Emmanuel College in Boston and I own a college in New Rochelle, New York, which is about half an hour away from New York City so both those schools fit the areas I was looking for. The reason why I say to know the kind of area you want is that's where you're gonna be for most of your year for four years. Mm -hmm. So you definitely want to be somewhere where you know you're gonna feel comfortable and you know it has like stuff around you that you can do so you don't strictly live on campus. One school that I looked at didn't have that and there was nothing around. I was probably gonna be on campus for most of the mm -hmm. time and that's not what I wanted. Yeah I mean like that that's always nice but like it's good to have stuff in the area too that you feel like that you would like. Yeah that's what I mean just like looking in the area of the schools to see like what's around just making sure it's what you want. Yeah. My number one is Greek life. A lot of people are not interested in Greek life at all so um, I'm not really somebody that's big into Greek life but I have two roommates actually that I live with. I live with three. Two out of my three roommates are actually in the same sorority and they're big into Greek life and so the first school that I went to had no Greek life at all whatsoever. Wow it's bright. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Spotlight on me. Literally spotlight on me right now. Oh, if Greek life is something that you're really interested in, I would definitely consider going to a school that had a Greek life program. For example, my school, I go to UNH, aka the University of New Haven, and they have a Greek life program, but it's a lot smaller than like schools down south, like Alabama, UGA, and things. If you want like a smaller Greek life program, you can go to a smaller school like I do, or if you want a bigger one, if Greek life is important to you, make that important and make that a priority when you're choosing your college. The second one we have is kind of similar to Aaron's first point and it's to look into clubs. This is something that like you may not think of when you're looking at colleges but it's really important because it's a very easy way for you to make friends on campus especially. You're gonna be lonely as hell. Join a club. Especially since it's your first year at the school and you don't know what you're going into. It's a really good idea to look at clubs that you might want to join. Both of the schools I'm choosing between both have like theater clubs similar to the one I have at my high school so that's something that definitely drew me to both of them so I would still be able to do that. You don't have the same friends in high school so definitely take advantage of stuff like that. Like what I'm doing try to look to see if they have a club one that you were a part of when you were in high school so mm -hmm. You can still have that kind of environment you like, but you can still get to meet new people. My next tip, so like my second one would be housing. This kind of goes along with like visiting the campus and stuff. Housing is so important. Like for example, my friend Lizzie used to go to um, MCPHS and that's in Boston and housing is only guaranteed for one year, but Ariel goes to Emanuel and housing is guaranteed all four years. So if housing is something that's important to you, if you're not looking to get an apartment while you're in college, don't go to a school like MCPHS. Yeah, you definitely want to look into a school where if you intend to live on on campus that you know you'll be able to and it'll be something that you're able to get and it's like a guarantee. Yeah also tour the freshman dorms. I think with most tours they bring you through the freshman dorms so that's not really something you have to worry about but I would definitely if they don't do that for some reason look up like online digital tours because it's so important. That's gonna be a room that you're in for like a lot of the time. And also if they don't have on their main tours they don't take you to housing they probably look to see if they have a strictly residential tour. Or you can probably ask. I mean, like, Still, that's possible too. Because, like, some things, like, they don't take you to that, but if they have mm -hmm. a residential tour, if not. Or even look up, like, dorm room tours. Yeah. For Ooh, people yeah, that yeah, go yeah. to that school to see what, what it'll be like. That? Okay. 
because I'm smarter than you. Yeah. The third one I have is a more obvious point, and that is to look into the cost and financial aid options. If you've ever watched, I thought of this point when I was in my room, but if you ever watch Say Yes to the Dress, they always tell you to not try on a dress that you know you can't afford. Oh my god, that was such a good analogy. That's what? <laughs> that was so good. It's, it's true though, like don't go to NYU and tour it if you can't afford it. Yeah, exactly. Because they always tell you, you might end up falling in love with the dress and you'll be heartbroken when you remember this is out of my price range. That was so good. The thing with that is that if you think you'll be able to afford it, if you do get a lot of money from financial aid and scholarships and grants. You can still consider it. And all that kind of stuff. You can consider it. But if you know it won't be likely, even if you do get money from the school, don't tour the school. Don't do research on the school. Because if you end up falling in love with it, you're going to be heartbroken when you realize that being able to go to the school is not an option. Mm -hmm. My third tip is study abroad. So study abroad when I went into school was something that I was really passionate about. But this time, not so much. I think I might be going abroad next year for like two weeks I was gonna go this year but if you didn't see my recent vlog I'm not going to France anymore this year but anyways if study abroad is something that's really important to you definitely look into it so for example study abroad was something that I was really excited about going into my freshman year so I went to Salve Regina and they had a really good study abroad program and they still really do so honestly if you're looking for a really good study abroad program definitely consider that school because they have a lot of connections now going into it study abroad isn't really that big of a deal or really high up on my priority list so I decided to go to UNH where study abroad is still available and I might be going to study abroad like two weeks abroad with one of my classes next year but it's not my ride or die I don't really put it up high as a priority but if study abroad is important to you and getting an experience is definitely put it up as a priority and look into schools that have a good program and you could definitely talk to admissions counselors too because I feel like mm -hmm. they would know another thing to look into is not just if they have a study abroad program but specifically where those study abroad programs oh. take you yeah like if you don't if they only have like Italy and Australia and you want to go to Ireland maybe, maybe not the go school for you school. and also like look into if study abroad costs the same as tuition because mm -hmm. I know some schools is just oh it's your regular tuition price so but it's some not, like, schools you, have to, you have to pay extra some schools you have to pay extra so if you don't want to pay extra you should consider that to be another thing to look into about like how much study abroad will cost you. Another thing is something I don't think a ton of people think of, but that is to look at the school student to faculty ratio. This is more specifically to the people who want to like know your professors. Mm -hmm. If you want to be able to know your professors, look to something that has higher student for their ratio. So one of the schools has a 15 to 1 ratio, which means there is more students than professors. There is a higher chance that you'll have a professor again and also kind of going along with that is class size if you want like a smaller class size definitely look into it yeah both the schools i went to actually had a smaller class size and i really appreciated it because for example at university of new haven right now i've been in the same major obviously for a year and the class sizes are small they're normally about like 15 people especially because as i'm getting older and getting more into my major my classes are getting smaller but it's honestly really awesome because i've had the same teacher all three semesters i've been there and I'm having him again next semester and it's so great to let him see my growth and he can obviously be a really good recommendation for me and he can really help me. Next tip I have is look at the rigor of the classes because obviously if you applied to the school and they accepted you, they think that you can do the work and they think that you're smart enough. But if you don't think that you can handle the work or if you're looking for something to really challenge you, that's definitely something to consider when choosing a college. If you're looking for an Ivy League sense of like rigor and somebody to push you, definitely look towards that. But if you're looking more for something that's a little easier and less of a reach school, then definitely look for something that's more of like a safety school. And this kind of can tie back into the point of look up videos from people that go mm -hmm. to the school. Yeah, because they, they'd be able to tell you like, because I have videos up about like UNH's like classes yeah. and rigor and like how I've done in the classes, so that's a good idea. And especially like maybe see if you can find someone who has like the specific major you want to go into. And your last one. My final point is one that I don't think a lot of people think of, it's definitely not something I thought of when I was looking to schools, is to look at their job placement rates. That basically means how many people are employed upon graduation or at least within six months of graduation. You definitely want a high job placement rate if you're looking to school, like both schools have r rates over 90%, meaning the grand majority of the students that graduate are employed and they find jobs immediately something you definitely want to look into so, like you know on average how long it takes for people 
to get a job if they go to that school because if they have like a 60% job placement right you probably don't want to go there but then clearly people are putting in all this work and all this effort and then not getting anything out of it and then they have to struggle to find a job afterwards especially mm -hmm. even kind of going along with that another thing I keep adding on they're good but internships Oh yeah, because if you too. get internship opportunities, some internships hire straight out of graduation, so that's something that would be helpful, and they kind of go hand in hand. My last tip is the overall feeling that you get when choosing the school. So, for example, honestly, when I went to Salve, I like I liked it for the most part, but I wasn't in love. Honestly, think about the overall feeling that you get when choosing the school, or when you get looking up the information overall. No matter what anybody else says, the feeling that you have and how you like the school and what you think about it is really what matters. And even like with Erin, if at the time you do really love the school and you're like, oh, this is the school for me, if that feeling starts to dwindle over time, dip. <laughs> transfer. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed this. Definitely comment down below if you're committing to any schools May 1st and if you have your school yet, where are you going to college? Comment yeah. down below. Probably not by the time I'm posting this video, Jamie will know, but as soon as she commits to a school, I'll definitely let you guys know. But once again, thank you so much for watching this video and letting me talk to my little sister Jamie at my house. Eee! And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!